Hello, welcome to Exotic Ghana UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. It's getting to that time of year where spring is nearly around the corner and we're starting to think about preparations for the garden and also sowing seeds and buying plants. And buying plants can be sort of hit and miss if you go to your local garden centre if you want exotic plants. And plants from abroad, again, harder and harder to get as well due to lots of regulations. So it's really great if we can get plants from exotic nurseries here in the UK. And last year I went and visited Turnit Tropical and had a look at their setup down in Norwich. So let's go back to Norwich and have a look at the Turnip Tropical Nursery. Right, my name's Carl. I have an online nursery called Turnip Tropical. We're based in Norwich, uh, just outside Norwich in Ratkeith, and we sell um, post plants all over the UK. Um, up until last year, we were posting out to Europe, but since all the Brexit changes, we only now post to UK addresses. Well, plant-wise, I would say our most popular plants we sell colocasias, bananas and alocasias. Um, this year we've tried to bring in a few more shrubs, house plants due to the house plant um, boom last year. The very first plants I used to sell were carnivorous plants so we do have a range of carnivorous plants as well which is really what got me into the whole, the whole growing plant side. Um, a little nurse I used to work at well, when I left school they grew lots of normal plants, uh, roses, bedding plants, that sort of thing. And I was trying to encourage them to grow something a little bit more unusual, but they weren't really that interested. So I took it on myself to source some carnivorous plants, uh, which I actually grew to sell, then used to propagate. Um, found myself selling them to a few other local plant people in the area. Um, and from that, I bought my very first polytunnel which I do still have, although it's not up at the minute. Um, you know, it sort of made me, I suppose at a young age, made me a little bit of pocket money, which then grew over the years into what we've got now. We find our main probably selling season is probably March till about, probably about now, sort of like September time. Um, peak time is, you know, probably bang in the middle of that. So we do notice February we have a few orders come in. As soon as you get the, the, the final frost finish is when we, we really start to get a lot of orders come in. And then as soon as the nights start pulling in is when we tend to tail off a little bit. Although we do still sell all year round. Um, you know, I think people do like me, I buy plants all year round. If it isn't plants, I buy seeds. So we do sell seeds as well this time of year. We should have our first lot of seeds coming in probably in the next few weeks, which we then packet them up and then we sell them on. This year we're going to give a bit more advice on how to germinate. We do a lot of our own germination. Every plant requires a different process. Uh, so we've sort of taught ourselves or we just research into it, which works best for us. We've now got our own propagators and stuff. So we've sort of invested quite a bit of money this year, especially into growing our own. So we're going to try and pass on some of that knowledge our customers so you know you can grow your own hopefully as successfully as we can although we don't have success every time like everybody knows um, we could try a hundred different seeds and none come up but that is part of it I suppose so it's not just you it is us as well you know we've been doing it for years in a few years time I'd like to say that most of our stock is homegrown um, you know there's some things we can't grow ourselves so we have to have to buy it in some things you can find easily one year, next year you can't find it. So I try and keep as much as I can of my home, own stock to just propagate again. Um, and my plan also is to try and focus on smaller plants at a, a more reasonable price than to buy uh, big plants in. I have everything too big, I won't have a lot of stock and a lot of variety, which is what my plan is, have more variety, smaller plants, and obviously cheaper prices as well. Over the last two years, tried to make our packaging as eco-friendly as possible. So obviously our boxes are cardboard. Um, we've 
moved over from plastic tape to craft tape, which also has our own branding on it. Um, documents and clothes slips are now made from paper rather than plastic. Um, the only plastic we do use is a biodegradable poo bag. We find that they fit our, most of our pots quite nicely. Um, although they're not plastic free, they are you know, biodegradable, so it's better than using cling film, which I see a lot of people use. Um, so all our packages are either biodegradable or recyclable. And this year we have also um, to some change um, our compost. Um, most of you are probably aware that there's a ban on peat in 2024. So we've tried to get one step ahead and we've actually now stopped buying in peat and we use a peat-free compost, which is predominantly bark, I believe, composted bark. So we've now been trialling that. Um, we mix our own compost up, so we use a bag of that. We add perlite, uh, vermiculite, slow-release fertiliser, mini-chip bark, and we've been experimenting with different, depending on what plant it is, um, what mix we use. And we're also now using recycled or bio, I think they're biodegradable pots. So the pots are no longer just plastic. A lot of the, a lot of the pots we actually we buy in now or have been recycled, um, but the ones we've got, they're like a brown biofiber type material. So I think they should compost away, but that's only on our small plants. Um, but this is something we're doing just to try and help the environment as much as we can. Um, one of the biggest things I find is the plants that we buy in are either wrapped in plastic, the trays are plastic and they're all single use. And it's one of my biggest things you know, that I really want to try and change. I don't know how. I know there's a few online petitions to try and get nurseries to not grow stuff in this much plastic. But I don't know how else they can do it. I mean, obviously cardboard and paper will get wet, so it needs to be something that's going to withstand that. Um, it's got to be a way, a way around it. But the more we can do, the better. And of all the plants I grow, uh, this one of my favourites is probably my Selenum pyracanthum. Uh, could be, some people call it Selenum pyracanthos, but it's a member of the tomato family. Really, really spiky, vicious turquoise leaves covered in orange spikes. Um, we've sold quite a few of them on the website, but it is a plant that actually I first came across um, is in one of my friend's gardens, Kevin, Kevin Scales. Um, quite a popular guy on the, the tropical plant pages. Uh, he had an open garden and he had this plant sitting on his table in a terracotta pot. Found the name, managed to get some seed and grew it myself and constantly have loads of them now because they're quite easy to grow from the seed. But yeah, just a really cool plant. Looks really quite vicious, really. I actually had, a, had one of the spikes stuck on my finger for a couple of weeks until I managed to get it out the other day. So yeah, not a nice plant, but it's a pretty cool, pretty cool plant. Um, and I think the tropical plant trend seems to be getting, you know, more and more popular. I mean, my other my other landscaping company, we've started to do a few more tropical jobs where we design, landscape and plant uh, tropical style gardens and I can only see that getting more and more popular. It seems quite popular on TV as well. Three or four of the gardening programmes I watch, they all seem to feature tropical plants and they all seem to get quite good responses. Everybody wants to be surrounded by plants that remind them of holiday and especially how the last two years have been people not managed to get away as much making your own garden like the holidays probably the next best thing um, probably not you know, cost wise probably just as much as it is to go abroad but you know you've got it forever pretty much you know and you can constantly change it which is what I'll do here my own garden it will evolve you know we've only been here since March and you know, I want to change this. I use a lot of my own plants for propagation as well. My girls will also hopefully get into it a lot more. They already seem quite interested. So I've got two girls, Sienna is the eldest, she's four and Talia is two. And, you know, having my garden set up with tropical plants, they're only going to learn more and more about tropical stuff and hopefully help me 
in the future. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK. Join me next week where we're doing more in the garden.